Thank you for coming to this session. Today we're going to talk about observability of applications based on the service mesh. <clears throat> First of all, uh, my name is Chavi Canal. I'm a software engineer working on a project. It's called a Kiali, where we observe container-based application basically on Istio and service meshes, working in Kiali and also in Red Hat. Um, so today, what we are going to cover <laughs> is mainly why we are here discussing of uh, service meshes, why a little bit of history, why we are here, why we are talking about that, and also talking about the architecture, how it works, how Istio actually is deployed, and, and why we have all those nice features. But most of the time of this uh, session, I'm going to spend it on, it on a demo. Uh, my, my team built a specific application where we have a, um, a bug inside or something is not working nicely. So we are going to see, thanks to Istio, what tools we have, what observability tools we have. In this talk, I'm not going to talk about a traffic management, not security, but I'm going to show you, walk through all the three uh, main pillars of observability that um, Istio gives to its users. And at the end, I'm going to do a really brief uh, recap. So why we are here, why we are even talking about service meshes? So, yeah, a lot of you, you like, know about these slides and we are, you know that we are moving from monolithic applications to microservices one, microservices or maybe just services one. So what we, know, what we were dealing like 20 years ago, with, we, it was uh, with application servers, like huge servers, really huge servers that deal with a lot of responsibilities do the front end of an application, HTML, JavaScript, uh, maybe dealing with emails, dealing with um, maybe in CPU intensive operation, maybe GPU intensive operation and disk intensive operation, right? So we had, we needed to have like huge server for dealing with those operations. So back then someone decided, okay, do I have to pay for this really, really huge server to maybe like compute like 10% of our requests that they are CPU intensive. I, and I do have to have a machine which don't know how many cores. This is really expensive. What about the splitting those responsibilities in a small <coughs> servers that for example, I have maybe one server for the CPU intensive operator operations another server or couple of servers for the, these ones, and maybe some of them for the regular request that they don't need a lot of uh, huge resources, right? So we were moving, we needed to move this monolith, a split, break it in down in different ones. So we got the microservices one, microserv microservice uh, paradigm. What's the, the big difference in here? that before in the monolith we were sharing information using the memory, right? Invoking a method, invoking, uh, importing a library and sharing information with it, calling some methods there. Now, for sharing information, what you have is you have the network. You have all these cables um, connecting uh, all the services, right? So for example here, one example. This is a, an example of a monolithic, uh, a monolithic um, application. We need to compute the benefits of a company. So what we are doing is just returning the substract of the income uh, and the outcome, right? No network involved. Let's put a microservices paradigm here. Now, those both uh, methods are using network. 
So then what do you need to do? This is not precise, just it's like for you to understand my point, right? So it's like now we have to deal with network. Then we have to deal with uh, timeouts. And for example, in this case, is how many retries we want to do because <laughs> the network is not reliable, right? So, okay, we have to keep, we, we have to, to sum how many retries we've been done, we, we've been doing, so, and say we have to retry again. And also, um, before in the monolith, we had one log and everything request started in one port it, uh, uh, and finishes that way. So, what we want to do now is keep, for example, distributed tracing. We want to, because now one request is not in one server, one request is made of maybe 10 different requests. So we want to keep like all the track of them, right? So we need to yet add one more, one client, imported client, for example, and then, um, and then manage if the initializations is, is having any exception. And at the end of the request, keep or close the the giga like tracing, right, or the span. And also for telemetry, it's not in like monolithic, you put an agent next to, next to, your, next to your application, and that agent went down to your services and collect all the information. Now you have to do it like for every single service you have. So you, you have yet another client here for keeping all this telemetry. So, we end up with a, um, a method that has 30 lines of code when we just needed one before, right? So developers in that scenario, they, they don't, they're spending a lot of time dealing with network, telemetries, uh, distributed tracing, and so on. And for example, um, security, right? You have tons of services, who is gonna, who is gonna be in charge of implementing TLS for every service, right? So a lot of a lot of a lot of um, extra codes for dealing with this. So here is the the service mesh to the rescue, right? So what we have is that now for every every service you have that the blue space is what we call the business logic of your application, carrying the benefits of the, of the, it's actually the business, the business logic. But then you have the orange boxes that are the libraries, modules, whatever you want to call it, in charge for dealing with network telemetry in, and dealing with the new paradigm of microservices. There's a bunch of technology in charge of it, but because every service can be written down in multiple different, in, in different language, in different languages. Maybe you have a benefits one is in Java, but then the other one is in Node, and the other one could be in C++, right? So now we have the developer taking care of too many responsibilities for just one single service. And yes, now yes, now is service mesh to the rescue. Service mesh. So, back on the like on the starting of Kubernetes. So we have the service and we have the platform, which is Kubernetes, and then you deploy a service on top of it, right? So is this a scenario? So we want to push those responsibilities down to the platform. So pushing it, pushing them down to the plat to the platform is what a Istio and Service Mesh are doing. Service Mesh and Istio then move us to this scenario where the service it only have the business logic operations where you can just compute benefits, income, or outcome data of your company, right? So you don't have to deal with all of them. These um, responsibilities go that went down to the container platform layer, what we call it the Istio service mesh, right? So now 
developers are just free to do just business logic. Okay, this seemed really, really cool, but um, how is it working? What's the magic here? So here is the architecture of, um, of Istio. A, what we have here, so check this out. Uh, we have, imagine we have a line here, dividing this, dividing this uh, architecture. So in the upper part of the, of the image, what we have is what we call is the data plane. Actually, where all our services are living, are running, right? Where the income service is, outcome and get benefits, for example. And then in the other one, in the, in the bottom part, what you have is the Istio modules, is the control plane that is a governing all what you have in your, in your data plane, right? I imagine like a castle, right? What the, down on the, on the mountain, like down the mountain, it has kind of the, the town, right? So from the castle, you can govern, you can see whatever is happening in your data plane, right? So the castle is the control plane and the town <coughs> is the, the data plane, right? So let's just start with the data plane. How is, how is this, how we can push those responsibilities down to the, to the, um, to the platform? So all these responsibilities now are in that proxy. Let me, let me explain a little bit better. So for example, now uh, when you deploy a service, automatically, Istio is automatically injecting a proxy in front of every service, right? This proxy, which is this one, it captures all the traffic going outside of the service and also the incoming one, incoming one. So, for example, if service A is calling to service B, what actually happens is that service A goes <coughs> to the proxy and the proxy forwards the, the, the request to the following proxy that this one is gonna forward to service B. In those proxies, something like authentication happen, so it means that security there's a um, security <coughs> termination, TLS termination living there. There's authorization. So uh, the proxy is able to respond the question, um, should I forward this request to the service or not, right? And also proxy uh, does this thing of which version of the service A should I send the traffic? I'm on A-B te A testing a scenario, so should I send it to version one or version two? Um, is the system really collapse? So should I prevent sending this request? Because I know that if I'm sending this request, my database is gonna blow up, right? So should I uh, stop forwarding this request? So this is the data plane where everything happens, all the, all the requests happen of your application. So the question is, and who is the one configuring this proxy? The control plane. Here you have four modules of Istio that manage all this configuration and make, make this happen. The first one is Galay. Galay is the one in charge of receiving configuration and checking for its validity. Is it valid? I'm gonna break, I'm gonna break the, the service mesh. And if everything goes okay, then it sends it to pilot, which is the one, the delivery guy, right? It's sending, it's sending all the configuration from the users, sending it, sending it to every proxy, proxy in the service mesh, in the data plane, sorry. Then you have Citadel. That's why we are on top of the mountain. Citadel is the one detecting if there's one new service, and if there's this service, then it sends a, a pair of keys in order to implement the TLS and end, right? So it's secure all the services you have, or at least it prepares for being secure and start using 
um, MTLS, Mutual TLS, or TLS for all the connects, connections on the data plane. And at the end, what you have is Mixer. Mixer, oops. All right, thank you. A, uh, a mixer is the, the one in charge for telemetry and authorization. So telemetry, is, it registers every request happening in your data plane and it sends back to Prometheus. And also it's in charge of authentication. Should I forward, should allow this request go to the final service, to the service B for example, and yes, this is the, the pillars of Istio. And with this, what you, what, you, what you can achieve and what you have by default is telemetry, traffic management, and security. Today we're gonna focus mostly on telemetry. One really, really important thing to say here is that uh, with Istio, you don't have to, to change any single line of code. Right? It's because of, you have this proxy here that it's like, it's really like um, managed by Istio. Developers, they don't need to change any single line of code. Actually, it's the opposite, right? We have to remove those 30 extra lines we added before and just call the network, call the service you want, and then Istio is going to do the retries, is going to do the uh, circuit breaking, is going to implement the TLS at the end. So you are back to monolithic area in terms of relying on the network, right? And telemetry and security. Okay, so now that we know that we have these three uh, group of fun functionalities, let me let me introduce you Kiali, and, and, and with it, we are going to see the observability, it, observability in action. So Kiali is uh, the observability tool for applications base, based on Istio Service Mesh. Kiali, what it answers is the question of how are my microservices doing? Let's go to the demo. So I'm going to spend now some time, most of the, the like remaining time probably, in here. So um, what we prepared here is a application. It's a travel agency application that basically is a really, really dummy application that you, are, you have three different portals are distributed all over the globe, that they are checking for cars, hotels, insurances, in order to make some reservations, book some of the services, right? Really, really easy. What we are gonna do with this demo is troubleshoot it. Understand what happened and go to the root, root case, to the root, to the problem, to the problem that is making our application uh, run a little bit sloppy and with uh, some uh, problems on there. This one, this uh, page you see here, this is Kiali, actually, this is the console. And as you can see here, like as the overview, which, uh, this is the overview page. So what we can see is all what we deploy in our Kubernetes or OpenShift. And here we wanna take care, we wanna check out only those two namespaces. Uh, let me filter that out. Yes, only those two, right? Um, we see that apparently everything is in green, so it looks like there's no problem here. What we see is that uh, configuration, all the configs are all right. The applications here, the six applications we, we are seeing are pretty healthy. Traffic is uh, stable. We see that like uh, 70 requests per second. So it looks pretty cool. Let me show you like what what is 
this application and how it looks like. Here, what you have, this is one of the uh, coolest, coolest fe uh, features we have in Kiali. And uh, this is how our application is connected, <coughs> how are all the requests flowing from one service to another. And yes, this is thanks to the Prometheus. You remember, guys, about this proxy we have in front of every service? So that proxy, what it does is it is capturing all the requests and sending it back to Prometheus. And with those metrics, now we are able to show this graph, right? Let me show one cool thing we have also, that is the traffic animation. And also, let me show if it's secure or not. So now you can see that we have actually traffic flowing from, from one service to another, from one service. OK, let me stop here a bit. So the triangles here are services, like the ones you know if you know Kubernetes, services itself. And that, that one is a, a workload. Workload meaning a unit of a runtime application, okay? It may be 100 pods, it may be one deployment, one deployment like releasing or creating uh, 100 pods, or yes, it's like uh, one piece of application. You can have multiple versions of it, so I can show you that, for example, here, for every application, we have version one and version two. So it looks like this application is running an A-B testing. It looks like, right? It's like for every, every request received in troubles goes to B1 and B2, and also from B1 goes to respective services, checking for insurance or hotels, that this traffic is a split in V1 and V2. Um, <clears throat> and here in this example, what we have is we have three different applications that they might live in different uh, data centers, or and this one is, is actually in, a, um, in different namespaces, so this one is a portal based in London, this one is uh, in Paris, and this one is in Rome. This, those portals are the ones sending traffic to the engine, and what we see is that there's two different customers here. We, we see that there's a web customer and VIP, the ones paying more money and probably getting, getting uh, better discounts on, uh, on its booking, right? So, more or less, I think it's clear what it does, this application. So, and one important thing is that uh, I remember someone saying that it's pretty, pretty useful, not only for seeing all the requests flowing, but also because I finally know how many services I have. Because I'm talking to one developer and he said, no, no, my name is Space Ayel, and my team only deals with three. But I'm talking to his, uh, his colleagues and has no, no, we are dealing with four. It's like, okay, how many things I do, do I have to secure? How many things do I have to like, take care of it? So, pretty cool. Let me show you, let me show you more things for understanding. Yes? Just a question. What do the large boxes represent? Are each of those Kubernetes namespaces? Uh, the large boxes are applications, meaning that um, it's mm -hmm. runtime a pod deployment that run a, ver a application that has the same behavior but may have different versions of it, right? For example, here. And they are an Istio custom resource? Uh, they are just deployments. Nope, they are deployments and pods. And here it's um, just a representation out of the metrics. So actually, you see insurances here. So it means that um, B1 and B2 deal with the same responsibilities. For example, fetch, fetch insurances, book insurances, or cancel insurances. But there's two versions of it, right? 
but essentially it's the same the same behavior, the same application, right? Okay. Let's see one let's see response time because here thanks to Prometheus what we have is it the uh, responses time. Um, <coughs> what we have is that, um, for example, the traffic going to B1, it's taking 91 milliseconds, but the traffic going to version 2 takes 222. Here, what we can see, it's kind of the same, that 90 milliseconds for V1 and 200-ish to version 2. And same happened here, version 2. So it looks like the version 2 has a higher latency. Right? Here, exactly, exactly the same. So now... I want to introduce you the second, the, uh, the first pillar of the observability, which are the metrics, right? The golden rules. So with Istio, you have by default, with not changing any single line of code, you have something like, like this, which are the unbound, inbound, and outbound metrics. So we want to guess, we want to see, what happened with those latencies? And we, um, we want to answer the question, for example, is which users are suffering the most this new version 2 that has this uh, low, um, higher response time? So what you have is that you have the ability with Kiali to group, to group metrics by remotes. Oops. Just let me show this one as the one I wanted. So you remember uh, travels, travels, the travels um, service had as a clients the London portal, Paris portal, and Rome portal. Travels is kind of the front end of our engine, right? So we want to know a for every portal which users are the are the most affected by by this um, by this uh, version two? So if I'm if I'm grouping the metric the all the telemetry by remote version by web and VIP uh, versions of it, what you can see is that yes, the VIP. So there's two different lines of um, response times. The VIP are really, really like um, a high response time, 104. But for the web one, it's around, let's say, 50, 60 milliseconds. So yes, we are, we are observing that VIP ones, the users that are paying extra money or we want to take care of them, they are suffering of our new deployment. So, okay, let's 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 see what happened. Let's let's see wh who are which pods are the ones a um, having the, those problems. Do you see also that you have little dots in in here like correlated? Can you see these dots? These dots here are actually the traces that are automatically recorded in every proxy. So what you can see is that the same time of you see here at that moment, what you can see is the actual traces that lasting those milliseconds. So you, what you see is that there was a request to troubles uh, at that part that lasted that, um, that amount of, of time, right? So you have, we have correlated, not only, we have correlated the metrics and also the traces registered on our service mesh. So we can see for every, every, every request where it happened. 
on the top or in the bottom. So we clearly see that most of the traces are off from the VIP. So let's check that out. Let's, let's see what those traces says. And for that, what we're gonna go is to the services because Istio, it traces for, it traces, it, it creates the traces or track the traces with the, um, in the services, not in the, not in the workloads. This is the page of a service with uh, information related to the service. We see that there's two uh, endpoints. We see which part uh, is exposed. We see there's, there's th those two versions that belongs to a flight, to the app flights, and yeah, and also it's version one and version two. But the most important thing we see the troubles is the the front end is the one sending traffic to it and then uh, flights is sending traffic to its um, pods right but let's go let's go to the tracing tab here the awesome thing you can say is all the traces related to that flight to that flight service so we see here all the traces and quickly we can see is that there's three le levels of traces right one level here around like zero milliseconds should be probably five milliseconds or another one here around like 50 milliseconds and one more on the top Oopsie. here right so Let's, let's check those, those, those traces. For example, let's go to the, um, to the middle one. What, you, what we, you can see for a trace is which are the spans that created that request. For example, uh, let's see for the flights, right? So we see that the service flights, this is the, the span so the requests going through flights and we see here some extra information what we can see is yes this trace in the 50 milliseconds goes to b2 let's see to the discounts uh, the discounts span this one goes to b2 also all right let's check the these ones that are are they don't have like this this huge uh, delay and let's see which version are using this one it uses b1 one one span uses b1 and the other span for flights uses the v2 all right it also has v2 so v2 is like not introducing a delay but because it's like only five millisecond something is going really mad then for the 10 milliseconds one let's check that out and what we can see here is that uh, here this request goes to v2 the ones on flights and in troubles it uses b1 okay well it's not clear we see that uh, v2 when when v2 is involved then it might have like a extra delay or uh, the la la latency grows but we are not sure about it it's not all the time so it looks like v2 introducing randomly a um a delay so let me introduce you the the uh, third uh, pillar of uh, observability which are a uh, the um the locks Right? So with Istio, what you can also check is w the logs of a, a specific, of a, a specific application. Not only the logs, let me, let's, let's go to V2, which is, makes sense uh, regarding our, our a, um, hypothesis. So you, what you can see is the logs of of the of the of you of one of one workload not one pod you can have many multiple pods here but also you can check 
the logs of your proxy and see what's happening here. So this is the this is the proxy we were talking about in the architectural page. So um, it looks like everything is kind of okay. Info, info, no errors, nothing happened. And let's see the logs of our applications of B2 on cars. So what you what you see here is that, for example, you have one get car for city London, but then you have, okay, you have here one chaos monkey, uh, one line saying chaos monkey introduced five, uh, 50 milliseconds of latency. Do, do you do you guys know what is a chaos engineering? How many of you? Okay, so it looks like <laughs> someone just released a version two with a uh, 50 milliseconds uh, delay on all the requests, right? So, I mean, <laughs> not, not that cool, but uh, okay, we are on uh, Istio, so we can amend this, right? So, so far, we've seen that we have metrics for the graph and seeing how healthy are our applications. Then what we saw, <coughs> it was the, the metrics and the response time for everything. And after that, we see telemetry for, like, for uh, distributed tracing and for logs. Now, what I wanna, wa want to introduce you is how we can prevent our VIP users to receive this bad experience. How we can use traffic manage management from Istio to cut all the communications to versions two that, the, that they are the one introducing, introducing latency. And just for fun, let me see if B2 has also introduced some extra, extra chaos. It looks like no. So we were right, B2 is the one for sure introducing a uh, latency here. Okay, um, so yes, here we have these, um, these uh, uh, the response time really, really high, and we see that everything is flowing from cars to V1 and V2, so what we should do is uh, prevent, prevent all the traffic to flow to V1. Right, so I'm gonna introduce you what we call it the Kiali action, where we you go to a service, which is the one in charge of uh, splitting traffic to one version or another, and we are gonna do is suspend traffic. We are going, we are going to suspend traffic on version two. With this, what uh, Kiali does is create for you the necessary configurations on Istio, that goes through Galley, Galley sends it to Pilot, and Pilot, the deliv delivery guy, goes to every, or the, the proxy, necess the necessary proxies, and installing those new configurations. Here you can see that, that we create for you this new, this new YAML, saying that now 100% of the time, Let's go to V1 subset and 0% of the time go to subset V2. Let's check that out. Let's go to the graph. And if we see now, we just done this one. Let me, let me highlight which is the app cars. Okay, so you have a cool feature here for highlighting what you have. And let me show the request per seconds. Right now, uh, the graph says, okay, here you have a virtual service, so you have uh, traffic management uh, going on over here. This should be getting a stable over the time, and we should see that it should be zero in a few seconds. or for if demo gods wants, it should be zero, request per seconds, percentage, 
okay, it's getting like lower percentage of requests going down, 32, and so on. This is for the last, yes. So now for the last minute, what we have is that now there's no traffic here. So we didn't change any single line of code. We didn't have to rely on any configuration service. Just go to the configure the, the platform. We could do exactly the same for all the others, all the other services. So you will finally <coughs> traffic all the traffic all the all the uh, traffic. Sorry, we will forward all the traffic to only V2. Let's say, for example, again to hotels, and you th we do exactly the same. Or let's do another different thing. A uh, wait. We can, we can uh, split traffic, not zero, 100, but what we can do is, it's like, okay, we, for example, the scenario of, we've talked to the guy who introduced this chaos monkey, and he, uh, he convinced us to leave, to at least for one of the workloads, try only 10% of the traffic, because sometimes it's really, really useful, sometimes it's really, really useful to play with real traffic, right? With a new version. We don't wanna like do performance testing with a, like invented plan. We just wanna use real traffic, right? So we can do something like that, send 10% of the traffic here and the rest to the previous version that we know it works. So if we should go to the graph now, I don't want you to believe me so, we should see, I don't remember now which was the, um, which one? Hotels. Hotels, thank you. Yeah, so here we have, actually, I don't know why I ask, because I have here a virtual services saying that something happening. And you see that over the time, a, um, the traffic going to version 2, it's going to be like 90, 10%, right? Cool things you have is a, if you see the uh, traffic animation, you see, it, uh, you see, you see the request here. A, if you have plenty, uh, if you have a lot of requests, then you're going to see a lot of, a lot of uh, dots here and the size of the dot is the size of the request. If you have, for example, uploading pictures, if you have a picture like a service, uploading, upgrade, uploading pictures, then you're gonna see that you have huge balls or not. So it's gonna be easy for you to say, okay, we have uh, bandwidth problems, so let's go to that service and see what we can do this, this area, for example, right? Uh, the cool thing I didn't show you before is that um, we also show um, security because Istio by default uses one thing it's called MTLS. Do you guys know about MTLS? No? Okay. MTLS is like TLS but not only, not only from the client standpoint it saying, okay, server, are you who you say you are? It's both ways. So client, uh, so server <coughs> identifies for a client, and client also says, "I'm the valid interlocutor here," because especially for microservices and especially for machine-to-machine -machine communications, it's it's really important to identify both ends of the communication, right? So what you see here really easily is that um, you can find all the all the edges all the communications that uses mtls at this point it's all of the traffic this is really cool feature <coughs> and for example what you can see here what you can do here also is now tell me response time which are the edges that last more than 200 milliseconds and we can see that this one, the, the version 2 still uh, have a l high latency, right? All right. 
Um, yes, and, and here probably you're going to be one of like the, it's going to be a premiere, right? Because we have this really, really nice tool, <laughs> which is the uh, replay that also, yeah, this is, this is brand new. So what you have here is that if you, if you had like a, an incident, you had like a problem, what you can do is replay. It's like a football, right? It's like when, when you score a, a goal and then you're showing like what happened. So what you, you can see here is that you can replay, you can replay what happened for the last five minutes. So you can see all the traffic flowing and you can, you can check all the response time happening over there for the life for the last five minutes. So isn't it awesome that you can replay what was happening at the, the point that you had an incident and you still can uh, use the usual tools for highlighting things, seeing if it was because the MTLS, it was introduced and making you some issues, or maybe you want to replay the moment you uh, roll out a new version and your system get really, really, really like um, saturated, like full of requests. That's awesome. And I think it's a premiere. I, I think this is like a Monday Comet or something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's kind of most of the things I have for you, but before finishing, let me, let's do a recap, because uh, sometimes I can be a little bit messy, like, uh, talking about things. So what, what we can, what we can say that is your leverage in terms of observability, not security, and not traffic management, those are two different talks. It's the four, four golden rules of metrics, service discovering. So you see automatically, you know, when you introduce one service, you see it on this graph. You see, did you see a lot of uh, green light, green, green communications there? Health communication, dashboards, meaning that you can see all the response times, operations per second, even runtime, runtime operations, and then security status. Second, second pillar here, it's a distributed tracing. We saw that from here, you can see a sneak peek of the distributed tracing. And also, if you want the full information, you have access to the um, to Yeager console. And then locks, not only for the application, but also for the proxies. Since you introduce it, proxies in front of every service, now you need to know what is happening there. One question. Yes? Is the proxy be, uh, in front of the service or in front of the pods? In front of the pods, sorry if I, yeah, in front of the pods. Okay. It's like every container, it has, uh, every pod has two containers, the, the uh, application and then the proxy. And the proxy <coughs> is like capturing all the all the outcoming uh, reports from the service and and forwarding it. Yes. So sh this should be. So does this one is the con the pod? So one uh, container here, and in the same pod you have the proxy here. Okay. And that one here is the one sending everything necessary to for telemetry. That's why we have the graph and metrics. This one is also configured by this one for MTLS and TLS terminations. And also this one is configured thanks to this one and this one. Right? More questions? I think it's time for questions. Yes, please. Um, I wonder why uh, you mentioned that the graph, or even the graph of traffic uh, that you use Prometheus for that, Prometheus metrics. Yes. And I wonder why I think uh, if you have also the full tracing, you could build it. if you have the tra distributed tracing, yes. you could build the graph from there as well, I believe. So why, can you elaborate on why would you use Prometheus instead of what is the advantage or what, what yeah. do you think you do that? 
the uh, the basic. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna be be, be, be straight here. It was I remember that they built before Kiali used to use it like a service graph, and it was it was based on uh, on Prometheus telemetry, and it was really really like um, it was thought for this for this end Prometheus. So it was Istio Istio guys that designed all the telemetry kind of for 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 yeah showing the representation of all communication. So it, it was pretty straightforward. And the second thing is like Istio, um, if I'm not wrong, is like putting a lot of metadata in every matrix. So Istio is it puts there for example MTLS security. Uh, what's the status of security? It puts it it says if it's like inside or, or outside of the cluster. And there's a lot of metadata there that is really, really useful for, for, for the, the, the graph. Besides that, I cannot be accurate. I wasn't working on that area, and I might be wrong. But more or less, those are like the highlights of it. Okay. And I haven't dig that much <coughs> also in distributed tracing, and I don't know the difference. But if you want, I think at the end, and maybe offline, 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 no, not in blue jeans now. <laughs> uh, after the talk, we can we can gather a couple of you guys and talk about it. If you want. Okay. Yep. Can Kiali visualize or show any connections that go off the cluster? Yes. I mean, Kiali shows the traffic as long as it has the proxy in front and it's part of Istio, right? So if it's outside of the cluster and outside of Istio, then you will see the traffic going outside of the mesh, and you and that's it. But you will see that what happened from until the end, the egress, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is run in a in a cluster, not a master node, but in in, in the cluster in Kubernetes, right? Yes, it's open to this. On the compute nodes. Um, or do you deploy it? How is it deployed in the in the cluster? It's, uh, when you when you enable this, this comes with OpenShift out of the box, or you have to? No, um, uh, I mean, if the question is, this is like a Kubernetes. It's yeah. one cluster. This one exactly. This one. It's on Amazon. Okay, it has four nodes, right? This is one one part. So Kubernetes in Amazon with four nodes. The second the second one, if you want to enable this. Then what you do is you have your deployment, your your services deployments, right? Mm -hmm. And then what Istio and OpenShift Service Mesh does, it automatically injects another container in your deployment. So automatically, when you deploy this, you have the proxy um, on the con on the pod. Does it answer your question? Okay, but I'm just wondering, control plane, it's running within the cluster? Okay, the control plane is running in the cluster. Yeah, it's one namespace, Istio system, for example, and there's the, the no, are probably six, seven pods running everything. And yes. just to, is there any, I mean, performance overhead? Uh, yes. How do you approximate? Yeah. How uh, do you numbers, scale your cluster yeah. if you want to use this? Yeah. Uh, number that we, uh, is depending on the scenario and depending on the features you're enabling it. Mm. The one, of course, this is not for f for free because it's like you you're putting a proxy in front of every pod. So it, it's a clear a uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, clear a, a clear overhead. Um, people in Istio for chip service mate, they are re working really really like uh, intense there to reduce this late latency and that, especially for telemetry. Uh, how to approach that? Uh, most of the people start with the staging, try <coughs> to see a lot some of performance tests on there, but I don't have a, yeah, a further idea of how to how to approach that. One of the ideas is try to try to add Istio in your in your cluster and not not put the proxies to all of your deployments, but just maybe for two of them, see how it works, enable M security, enable everything, see what you can that you you can get of uh, traffic management with just like three or four of them, 
because if you put if you put Istio with no proxies, it's just having pre the Istio application and that's it. The thing is when you put the proxies in front of it, so you can gradually move from non-service mesh to service mesh application, and when you feel comfortable with three, then maybe we, you can go with uh, four, five, six, until you have. Yes? So, so when you deploy it, you choose it on, on a main space level or on a no, it's per service, le service level? Service, uh, deployment level. Okay. Yes? So it's like, no, not the whole name of space, but only for the services you want or deployments you want. Yeah, so it's really kind of like, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid that we're running out. Oh, okay. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone here.